darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left in scenes while I was sleeping. And the vision that was planted in my brain still remains within the sound of silence. In restless dreams, I Breast cancer may be one of the oldest known forms of cancerous tumors in humans. The oldest description of cancer was discovered in Egypt and dates back to approximately 1600 BC. It was not until doctors achieved greater understanding of the circulatory system in the 17th century that they could establish a link between breast cancer and the lymph nodes in the armpit. Radical mastectomies remained the standard until the 1970s, when a new understanding of metastasis led to perceiving cancer as a systemic illness as well as a localized one, and more sparing procedures were developed that proved equally effective. The first symptom or subjective sign of breast cancer is typically a lump that feels different from the surrounding breast tissue. The race for the cure began in 1983. The first race was in Dallas, Texas and had 800 runners. In 1995, race events were held in 57 U.S. cities. By 2002, more than 1.3 million people participated in more than 100 races around the United States and in two foreign countries. 2008 celebrated the 25th anniversary of the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure series. Here in St. Louis, in 1999, 10,257 people participated in the race. This year, in 2009, 66,136 participants were there. In 1999, when it began, $309,000 were raised to advance cancer research as well as aid. This year, $3,250,000 were raised. And the sign flashed out its warning. No words that he was for me And the signs said the words of the prophet Signed on the subway walls And tenement halls And whispered in the sound of silence This race is more than just numbers It's more than just research, history, medical it's a fight, and it's hope. And it's seen in the faces of the people that run the race and in the spirit that is there during that race every year. This year, I had the pleasure, as I did last, to be a volunteer, to be on the sidelines cheering on these warriors in pink, as they are called. I had the honor of clapping and cheering these people on as they went on a race for a fight for something so much bigger than any of us. And this year as I stood there, I had many people point and cheer at me, um, some guy on stilts. And yet, here I was, awestruck by the thousands of people I could clap and cheer on and motivate towards this goal and this just awe it is a phenomenal experience to go there and have so many people coming out with their shirts of support for someone who has, um, who's a survivor or someone who's passed or anything along those lines. It's just, there's a lot of strong energy there and a lot of support for the cure. You can see in these pictures the faces, the smiles, the energy. And as a performer, I stood there what I was motivating by what I was cheering on. But at the same time, being able to be there with my family and not really fully understanding how close this affects. 
Well, I uh, work the block party with my uh, company, and we're the people on, and we do it every year. Very and good. I feel very, um, it's a very important thing that I want to do every year because my boss and a dear friend of mine are both survivors for 10 years. The day after this race, talking to my best friend as I put this project together, I discovered that his sister-in-law had two mastectomies and as a survivor. For the last two years as I stood in this race, I had no idea how close it was to my home. And this had happened within this last year. Cheering these people on is something special, something sacred. It's an opportunity to be that cheerleader for a cause that's so much greater than myself.